Hi guys, this is the Edexcel AS Level Maths Paper 2 from the October 2020 series and in this paper we will be taking a look at the mechanics section. Question number one. At time t equals zero, a small ball is projected vertically upwards with speed u meters per second from a point A that is 16.8 meters above the horizontal ground. The speed of the ball at the instant immediately before it hits the ground for the first time is 19 meters per second. The ball hits the ground for the first time at time t equals t seconds. The motion of the ball from the instant it is projected until the instant just before it hits the ground for the first time is modelled as that of a particle moving freely under gravity. The acceleration due to gravity is modelled as having magnitude 10 meters per second squared. Using the model, for part A, we have to show that u equals 5. And at this point, I think it will be useful to draw a diagram. So for part A, if we actually draw a diagram, we've got this point A over here somewhere. And... What's happening is the ball is being projected upwards with speed u meters per second. Okay. So here we've got our point A. And this point A is 16.8 meters above O. Okay. So here we could have said the point O. And therefore, this distance is given by 16.8 metres. Let's just add this to the diagram here. We have 16.8 metres. Okay. So let's just draw our ground. So here is our ground. And then we also know that the speed of the ball at the instant immediately before it hits the ground for the first time is 19 meters per second. So what this tells us, once it travels up, it comes back down and just before it hits the ground, the speed is then 19 meters per second. Let's add this to the diagram. We have 19 meters per second here and we also know the acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second so if we take downwards as positive then here we've got 10 meters per second squared okay so let's just color code all this first of all here we've got the point a here We've got the point O. So we've got U meters per second in the question. So the U meters per second corresponds to the speed it's going up. We've got this distance 16.8 meters. We've got this speed over here 19 meters per second. And we've also got the acceleration which is 10 meters per second squared. Now, for us to determine this value of u, what we can do is use our SUVA equations. So if you go to the formula book, the formula we want to use is v squared equals u squared plus 2as. Why do we want to use this formula? Well, we know the final speed, we don't know the initial speed, we know the acceleration, and we know the distance. So, therefore, using v squared equals u squared plus 2as, we have v squared, so here we have 19 squared, okay? This is equal to u squared. Now, be careful over here. If we said downwards is positive, u here will be negative. So here we have minus u squared 
plus 2as, so here we have two lots of a, a is equal to 10 meters per second. S over here is 16.8 meters. So therefore, we can solve for u. So, using this information, we have over here 19 squared, take away 2 times by 10 times by 16.8, you'd find that to be 25. So u squared, that's equal to 25. And of course, bear in mind, minus u, all squared is the same as u squared. So therefore, u, that's equal to 25 square rooted, which is simply 5. And now for part B of the question, we see over here that the ball hits the ground for the first time at time t equals capital T, and we have to find the value of t. So if we go back to our diagram, it hits the ground when t equals capital T. Now, for us to find out what capital T is, if we go to our formula book, we can use the formula here, V equals U plus AT. We know our final speed, we know our initial, we know the acceleration, and we know that we're finding out what the time is. So, using V equals U plus AT, we have V, which is equal to 19. That's equal to U, which is minus 5 because we took um, downwards as positive, plus a. So a over here is equal to 10. And then we see over here, as stated in the question, it hits the ground when t equals capital T. So therefore, we replace the little t with a capital T, and that's what we're finding. We're finding t over here. So with this, we can now rearrange to find out what t is. So if we do that, we see over here 24 is equal to 10t, and therefore t is equal to 2.4. Okay. Now for part C of the question, we have to find the time from the instant the ball is projected until the instant when the ball is 1.2 meters below A. So we're looking at the time when the ball is 1.2 meters below A. So if we go to our diagram, 1.2 meters below A, that's somewhere here, sir. Okay? So here we have 1.2 meters. And if we take the A level as our ground level, still taking upwards as positive, then what we can do is use over here, if you go to the formula book, we can use this formula here if we take downwards as positive. We're finding out what t is. We know the distance, that's 1.2 below a. So if we consider downwards as positive, we know that s is equal to 1.2. We know what u is, that's minus 5. We're finding out what t is, and we know the acceleration, that's 10. So, using that formula, we have for part c of the question, s equals ut plus 1 half at squared. We have s, which is equal to 1.2. This is equal to u, 
which is minus 5 multiplied by t, we're finding out what t is, plus 1 half times by a, a is equal to 10, multiplied by t squared. So we can find a quadratic for t. So if we rearrange this, we see that we have 5t squared minus 5t minus 1.2 equals 0. And now we can solve for t. So if we solve for t, let's use our calculator. So we have a polynomial of degree 2 with coefficients 5, minus 5 and minus 1.2. We end up with 1.2 as one of our values for t. And we also end up with minus 0.2. So therefore, we can conclude over here that t is equal to 1.2 seconds. And now for part D of the question, for part D, we have to sketch a velocity time graph for the motion of the ball for T being in between zero and capital T, stating the coordinates of the start point and the end point of your graph. Well, let's begin by drawing a set of axes, bearing in mind T is positive. Okay, so with that, we saw over here when t is equal to 0, the initial velocity, if we go back to our diagram, that was u meters per second, and we saw that u was equal to 5. And this time if we take upwards as positive, we see over here that our first point, here somewhere, we have this 0, 5. And capital T, that was equal to 2.4. So when t was equal to 2.4, the final speed was 19. And if we take upwards as positive, then v will be negative because it's going downwards. So somewhere here, say we have this point, 2.4 minus 19. So here we have 0 to t. And now if we join these up with a straight line, we have something looking like this. Of course, it doesn't have to be perfectly accurate, but that will do. Now, for part E of the question, in a refinement of the model, the motion of the ball, the effect of air resistance on the ball is included, and this refined model is now used to find the value of u. You have to state with a reason how this new value of u would compare with the value found in part A using the initial unrefined model. So here, greater air resistance would slow down the ball. For part F of the question, suggest one further refinement that could be made to the model apart from including air resistance that would make the model more realistic. Well, in the question, we were told that the acceleration due to gravity was 10 meters per second. In fact, we could use a more accurate version of gravity, for example, 9.8. So here, we could use a more accurate value of g. For example, we could say that g is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. Question number two. One end of a string is attached to a small ball P of mass 4m. The other end of the string is attached to a, another small ball Q of mass 3m. The string passes over a fixed pulley over here. Ball P is held at rest with the string taut and hanging and the, and the hanging parts of the string vertical as shown in figure one. Ball P is released. The string is modeled as being light and inextensible, the balls are modelled as being particles, the pulley is modelled as being smooth and air resistance is ignored. Using the model, 
you have to find in terms of m and g the magnitude of the force exerted on the pulley by the string while p is falling and before q hits the pulley. So if q is falling, so if sorry, if p is falling, essentially the motion is going this way. So q is going up like so and then this is going down. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So when we come to adding our annotations, we have to consider the weight of the pulleys. Here we have 4mg. And here we also have 3mg. And opposing that, we've got the tension in the string as shown here. Let's just get rid of these annotations shown here. So hopefully you can see how the balls of P and Q are moving. And our goal is to find the force exerted on this pulley over here. And before we do that, we need to first of all find out what the actual tension is. And we can do that by resolving the forces. So if we resolve for the forces for part A, we can use Newton's second law, the sum of the forces is equal to the mass times by the acceleration. So if we consider P, we have, if we go back to the diagram, we've got 4mg going down and T opposing it. Okay, so we've got 4mg minus t, this is equal to the mass, which is 4m, multiplied by the acceleration, we'll call that acceleration a. And then if we consider q, we've got t going upwards, and then opposing that is the 3mg. And that's because of the way it's moving. So here we've got minus 3mg plus t, equals 3ma. And if we first of all find out what a is, we can use that to find out what t is, and then from there, we can find the force on the pulley. So if we add these equations together, we see over here, 4mg minus 3mg, that's just mg, minus t plus t, that's 0t, 4ma plus 3ma, that's 7ma. Essentially, you can think of the m's cancelling on both sides, so we can rearrange to find out what A is. A is equal to G over 7. So here we have G over 7 meters per second squared. And we can now substitute this back into, say, equation 2 over here. So let's just call this equation 1 and this equation 2. We can use this value of A to find out what T is. So... If we do that, we have minus 3mg plus t, which is equal to 3ma. So here we have 3mg over 7. Okay. So if we rearrange for t, we see over here, t is equal to 3mg over 7. Okay. So we have 3mg over 7 plus 3mg. So in other words, we can conclude that t is equal to 24mg over 7 newtons. With this, we can find out the force on the pulley. So to find out the force on the pulley, you can see over here the force on the pulley would be this T over here plus this T over here. So in other words, the force on the pulley will equal 2T. So, substituting in for T, we see over here 2 multiplied by 24mg over 7. That will equal 48 mg over 7 newtons. And now for part b of the question, 
we have to state one limitation of the model apart from ignoring air resistance that will affect the accuracy to the answer in part A. Well, we could say, for example, the pulley may not be smooth. Question number three. A particle P moves along a straight line such that at time t seconds, where t is greater or equal to zero, after leaving the point O on the line, the velocity v meters per second of P is modelled as v equals 7 minus 2t, lots of t plus 2. And we have to find the value of t at the instant when P stops accelerating. So if it stops accelerating, instantly you should be thinking to yourself, A is equal to zero. Now how does V relate to A? Well, V would relate to A through differentiation. So in other words, we would have to differentiate V to find out what A is with respect to T. So first of all, for part A, let's begin with V equals seven minus two T lots of t plus 2. If I expand all of this out, I end up with minus 2t squared plus 3t plus 14. So a, that will equal dv over dt. Okay? So if I differentiate what I have over here, I want to differentiate minus 2t squared plus 3t plus 14. And if I do that, you can see over here, a will equal 3 minus 4t. Okay, so I'll just write it out in the order shown here. So differentiating minus 2t squared, we end up with minus 4t. Differentiating 3t, we end up with 3. And differentiating 14, we end up with 0. Now when a is equal to zero, we can use this to find out what the time is when it stops accelerating. So the time when it stops accelerating, that's when we have minus 40 plus three equaling zero. In other words, t is equal to 0 0.75. Now for part b of the question, you have to find the distance of p from O at the instant when P changes its direction of motion. Now to do this, I think it will be a good idea to, first of all, sketch V against T, and then we can recognize that distance is equal to the area under the velocity time graph. And of course, when we integrate velocity, we end up with an area, of course. So first of all, we can find out the point where the graph intersects the t-axis and we can do that by setting v equal to zero. So for part b, if we set v equal to zero, we have seven minus two t, lots of t plus two, which is equal to zero. So in other words, t is equal to minus two. Well, if we be technical about this, we see that t is equal to minus 2 and 3.5. So, in conclusion, because t is greater or equal to 0, 3 is equal to 3.5 seconds. So how does this help us? Well, what we can now do is draw the graph. Okay? So, we have something looking like this. It crosses here at... 3.5 and it crosses here at minus 2. But we know t is greater or equal to 0. So we want everything to the right of this line here. So the bit we don't want is all of this here. So we can literally get rid of it. Like so. So essentially you can think of it as us restricting the domain. And here, this point over here is 14. That makes sense when t equals 0, v equals 14. And this maximum point here would have coordinates 0 0.75. That makes sense because here we have a 0 gradient which corresponds to the acceleration equaling 0. And to find the corresponding y coordinate, we simply substitute this 0 0.75 into here. 
So here we have 7 minus 2 lots of this, lots of this plus 2, which is 15.125. Okay, so here we've got the point zero, 14, and here we've got the point 3.50. And you can see it changes the direction of motion over here. When, th when t is equal to 3.5. So when we find the distance, essentially we want to find the area. So, we want this bit over here, as shown shaded in this blue. So, first of all, it changes the direction of motion when t is equal to 3.5 seconds. That makes sense because here it's going negative. So v is, it implies that we're changing the direction of motion. And remember the distance, that's equal to the area under the graph. So p, the area from O to p, if p is over here, the distance is going to be all this over here. And we can find that by integrating v. So the distance, we'll call that distance r, that's equal to the integral of v with respect to t. So we wish to integrate minus 2t squared plus 3t plus 14 with respect to t in between 0 and 3.5. So if we work all of this out, Integrating minus 2t squared, we'll add 1 to the power, we end up with t cubed. Divide by the new power, we end up with minus 2t cubed over 3. Integrating 3t, if I add 1 to the power, I end up with t squared. Divide by the new power, we end up with 3t squared over 2. And if I integrate 14, well that's nice and easy, I end up with 14t. So I want to work this out in between the limits. 0 and 3.5. So for my upper limit, simple integration, we have minus 2 lots of 3.5 cubed over 3 plus 3 lots of 3.5 squared over 2 plus 14 lots of 3.5. For our lower limit, of course, we'll end up with minus 0 plus 0, plus 0. So if I work all of this out, well, we can actually use our integration function on the calculator. So we wish to integrate minus 2x squared. Well, it doesn't make a difference if it's an x or a t. The calculator doesn't have a t function, so instead we'll just use the x. Plus 3x plus 14 in between 0 and 3.5. And if I work this out, sorry, this was supposed to be minus. So here, I'm supposed to have the minus. So we end up with 931 over 24, which has a decimal that's equal to 38.8 meters to three significant figures. So we end up with 38.8 meters to three significant figures. Don't forget to add your units.